Hello, hey, this is Blake Angelos here with Yamaha Synthesizers here at In Stuff Music, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and say this, and it's not like I say this with every single live stream with these different dealers across the country. No, I kind of do, but I do have a special place in my heart for not only Pittsburgh, but for In Stuff Music, because it is such a cool store on so many levels with their new... Um, live performance area right next door that is unbelievable what a beautiful space to see live music which is coming back so soon and it's so awesome because you they it's such a great space there they have a great the other direction you know he took me through the um the the teaching facility that they have there which is awesome in a house i mean you cannot ask for a better music store in your town and especially a place like pittsburgh let me tell you something about pittsburgh for me you know i grew up in montana and you were a Broncos fan, right? But I remember when I was a kid growing up, it was always Cowboys, Steelers. Guess which side I was on? I always thought the Steelers were the Steelers were the best. I'm getting my 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 Pennsylvania accent. Water. I need some water, right? Something like that. Anyway, so hey, what am I here for? I'm here for the uh, the YC series keyboard. Um, I want to show you something else too, just before I start, because it's springtime. My wife just brought this in to me. And I got to tell you, this smells so good. This is like uh, lilacs and mint. And it's the, it, it is just, it's, it's like, it's amazing anyway. Happy spring, everybody. So before I start doing anything, I'm going to play a little, little tune here to showcase this wonderful instrument. I have a YC88 in front of me. We're going to go through the whole series here. And you will uh, hopefully walk away feeling centered in your YC knowledge. How's that, I guess? That's kind of weird. So I'm going to turn my mic off, move it aside, and I'll start this little thing here. Hold a moment here.
Always got to end with a plagal cadence. Well, I don't always. I want to keep my mic out of the frame. So there you go. Hey, I just played a tune using this instrument. And let me kind of break apart what you just heard. So the drums and the bass, they actually came from Cubase. I used a virtual instrument for that. And, uh, but I did use the YC88 the entire time. So in the production process, when I put down the drum and the bass track, even though I used a virtual instrument, I used the YC series and this YC88 in front of me um, for the audio and the MIDI interface, which is pretty slick. So you can use this as an audio and MIDI interface on a gig without having an extra um, audio interface with you. So it just takes one piece of gear out of the way if you want to play or produce with virtual instruments on a computer. So that's one thing. The other thing is all the horns in there, there were some little flute lines and brass section. That came from this. That's how many sounds are in here. There are so many cool usable sounds in this instrument. For It covers a wide range of stuff. And I'll talk about what this versatile instrument, that's our tagline for this. This is one versatile instrument right here. So the other stuff that you heard in there, I was playing um, at the beginning. Um, I played that cool uh, um, Tyne Piano, 73RD. This is probably my favorite Tyne Piano in here. But you notice, and I did this on purpose, I already had the delay up. I had running through a tempo delay. I love a tempo delay because it's so easy when you have a band and you just need to quickly change the delay line to fit what the drummer's playing, and hopefully the drummer isn't always speeding up or slowing down. No. Anyway, I play with great drummers all the time, so they never do. Um, but you can tap in the delay, as you can see right there in the screen. So I used that in there. Right? The next sound I had was an H1 organ. So in this organ section over here, which I'll go through in a moment, I have it split, actually for a comping kind of thing, so upper and lower manual are split here. Cool thing about this instrument, by the way, it's really easy to set a second keyboard for a lower manual. Right now I have it split, but if I needed a second keyboard, it's super, super easy just to literally MIDI in and MIDI out and go into the settings and set it up with lower manual if you wanted to go on a two keyboard um, uh, you know, organ style deal here. So, But right now I have it so I can comp in the left hand. Now you notice there's the rotary speaker over here. Well. I, since I'm using both hands here, I don't necessarily want to do that all the time. So you can assign a foot switch, you can see it change in there, to the fast and slow of the rotary speaker. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Next thing in here was this cool um, synth lead that I have in two of the key sections, which again, I'm going to go through all this in a little bit better detail. But in A and B, I have an FM, so it's true FM synthesis. One of the things that's in this instrument is a true eight operator FM synthesizer engine. And I also have it set for mono. So I have a monophonic lead sound. But you may have noticed that I have a couple of effects over here. And uh, one of them is a low pass filter. Now I, you can't see it because it, I wanted to keep this sort of in the frame um, and still clear and everything. But over there is a slider. Um, pitch bin and mod slider. You'll see a picture of it when I go through some stuff in here. But I have assigned the, um, super easy to do this, by the way, um, to the cutoff frequency of this low pass filter effect that I'm using. That's my pitch bin slider over there, too. So pretty slick. And then I also have a sign lead in keys B that I have an octave below. Right? You know, so anyway, um, so and then finally I ended with the, the the gorgeous CFX concert grand piano. So that's what I did at the beginning of this of this little tune here. Um, but let's talk about now the series differences on everything that I do in this synthesizer department here. So in my world, I have basically three types of instruments that I um, that I'm I'm all about. The CP series, the YC series, and the synthesizers um, that we have. So CP series, that is a focused stage piano. It says stage piano right on the front. So what that means is that you have a dedicated acoustic piano section, a dedicated electric piano section, and then a subcategory section for things like pads and stuff that 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 you put behind your pianos. But the idea is to make this a super, to make that a super focused instrument that um, that you can. Um, that if you're a piano player, that's what you want. You don't really need the organs. You don't really need a lot of the other stuff. You really just have a focused 
piano. And so that's what the CP series is all about, a piano-focused instrument. Now, the YC series that I have in front of me here and that we're talking about today, well, that is similar because the design is actually very, very similar between the CP and the YC. But the YC series has a little bit more versatility in how it works. Um, whereas the CP series has all of the pianos that we have available basically um, currently, we have the Bosendorfer in there, the CFX, like this one here. Um, we have um, the SU7, which is our premium upright piano. That's a CP exclusive um, product. I just hit my overhead camera there. Hopefully it'll be fine. We'll find out. Anyway, because um, I'm pointing at the CP that's right next to me. Um, but it has the, Imperi the Bosendorfer Imperial, for example. That's not in this instrument because we have a piano-focused instrument for that, right? But you still get great pianos in here. You get the CFX. You get the C7. So, um, but what you also get with a YC is a full-on organ section um, an, that has both VCM, virtual circuitry modeling, vintage modeled organs, so drawbar organs, three types of those. There's also FM synthesis for organs as well that do things like a pure sine wave organ um, that do two different types of combo organs from the 60s, electric combo organs. Um, and then there's also FM in this instrument for things like pads and leads. You heard this FM lead that I played there. That's true FM synthesis. Also, the great DX FM pianos are in this instrument as well. And then there's AWM2, which is our sample-based synthesis technology. And that's, ex that's what's in the CP, but that's all that's in the CP. Not to say that's all. That's a great... Uh, a great engine in that instrument, but again, because it's piano focused, you have all the pianos, all the electric pianos, where in this instrument, you have a little bit more versatility. So focused, versatile. Finally, very briefly, we have Montage and Modi X, MX. Those are synthesizers, and they're deep, deep editing. You can edit right down to the very lowest level, the element, what is our oscillator, or the operator level. You can get right down to that level and edit individual components, lots of control, lots of multi-channel audio outputs, whereas the CP and the YC are USB and MIDI audio, but it's stereo audio back and forth, right? Well, on something like a Montage, you can send out 32 outputs via USB individual, so you can, you can do a lot of um, very very intricate production in a DAW environment, but it's also a really serious synthesizer with a lot of deep editing. So that's a big difference. So that just gives you an idea of what the difference is between these different products that we have here. Which one's right for you? Well, if you want deep, you want a synthesizer. If you need more of a versatile instrument with an organ, you want the YC series. If you're just a pianist, just. If you're a pianist, the most awesome people in the world, like me, you want the CP series, right? So there's no such thing as just a pianist, by the way. So... YC series, versatile. So we have these three design concepts on this instrument. Sound, touch, and design. So great sound. Three different engines, great effects on board, and so on. Touch. Well, with the YC series, you have three different types of instruments. The YC61 with an organ-style waterfall action keyboard. You have the YC73, which is 73 balanced hammer. Um, and then the YC88, which is great a hammer. I'm going to go through those in a moment as well. So touch and then design. The design is a one-to-one -one interface. You saw me interacting with that interface while I was playing. Tap tempo, um, turning on and off an effect or whatever. The thing that I want to point out about that is I didn't go into some menu diving to get to that stuff. I did it like that. And that's what you want in a stage instrument. You want to have quick access to important um, parameters that change the sound in real time, that you don't have to pull yourself out of the music, which is the worst thing when you have to think, when you have to use your left side of your brain, if you've already rehearsed this stuff and you got it cold and you can really play it, well, you wanna stay in that right hemisphere side of your brain, right? You don't wanna get into a menu dive to get a delay line where you can just tap it in. That's what I mean by design, one-to-one -one interface design. Fast, effective, great controls. So let's talk about these YC players. I said before, YC61, Organist. So this has a waterfall action. Waterfall action on a on a on a. Um, I'm gonna do my little thing here. This would be like a key top on a piano, which is as good as I can do. Meaning that this is the key, right? And then the key actually goes over the top. The key top does a little bit. So there's a little bit of a of a of a lip on there. Um, that is the standard piano action. Well, a waterfall action is different. A waterfall action is more like this. I'm trying to make this as so it just goes straight over the edge, like a waterfall, right? And the, the advantage of a waterfall action on an organ, organists certainly know this, um, is when you do things like palm glissandos, it's very smooth, very easy. Organists have a very specific type of technique when they play, and 
um, the waterfall action really supports that technique. And the entire way that people play organ has been designed around the waterfall action, right? So for organists, the YC61 is perfect. The thing I like about the YC61 as well is that it's got a great you know, waterfall action and it's very light, but I can play piano on it as well. Something that I will keep pointing out maybe a few times is that the YC61, 73, and 88 internally are identical. All the sounds are the same. All the access to sounds are the same. The live sets might be different between each product because they're focused on different things, but the actual sound and what you can do with it are identical. And right now, I'll just talk about the major differences. First difference is the 73 and 88 have XLR outputs and quarter-inch outputs. The YC61, because it's compact, doesn't have the room for the XLR outputs, so it has just stereo outs on it. But, you know, you still have the same stuff inside, right? The other thing is on the back of this YC88 and a YC73, um, there's a little um, place where you can put the music rest. So for the piano and keyboard focused instruments, they have music rests that you can buy as an option. Um, whereas the 61, because it is so compact, there's just not a lot of room back there for it. So that's, that's the only difference though. XLR outputs in the music rest, boom, identically inside. I use the Y60, 61. Another reason when I play like a gig, I'm playing some gigs on a, on, I think a porch this weekend, which is going to be really fun, but I'll probably take the YC61 because it weighs 16 pounds. I can just take it to the gig, set it up, play it, and be done. Although I may do the 88. I don't know. But that's what's cool about the 61 is that it's super lightweight. Speaking of lightweight, the YC73 is also lightweight. It's less than 32 pounds. YC73 has a balanced hammer, weighted action. So it still is weighted, but it's a balanced hammer. So it feels more like an electric piano action. Um, although you can play pianos on it, no problem. The thing that's cool about the YC73 is that it's 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 small, you know, 73 notes, so it's not a full 88 note keyboard, but it only weighs, yeah, like I say, less than 32 pounds. So you can put that in its awesome case that we have these really great cases for these instruments, super nice nylon, but really well done cases. Um, you know, they have lots of places for storing pedals and cables. It's this plush inside that I have to keep my dogs out of because they like to sleep in it. Um, it's super, super sweet case. Um, but in the case, YC73 fits in the back of a small car. It's just, it's awesome. You still get the weighted action. So that's what the YC73 kind of pointed that towards gigging keyboardists. Finally, the YC88, which I was playing here, that has our graded hammer, um, natural wood, synthetic eb ebony and ivory key tops is what that is. Um, natural wood, the keys are wood. And it also has this sensor called the GH3 sensor. So what a GH3 sensor is, it's a triple sensor. That means that I can re-strike the note before it comes off the top of the, or the bottom of the keystroke. On, a, on, on other keyboards, when you play a note, it has to go all the way back to the top in order to re-engage the key strike. But with that triple sensor, it allows you to play very fast, repetitive notes. That's one thing it does. Another thing that's cool about it is that when you play very softly on here, you, you, you can really kind of connect to the instrument and play super soft because you don't have to lift your, your finger all the way off the key. You can still be connected to the keyboard and play much more expressively, I find, when you're playing piano-type things. So for the pianist, the YC88 is ideal. As a side note, the CP73 and CP88 have the same actions as the YC73 and YC88 as well. So it's a similar type of a thing, keyboardist and pianist, for the 73 and 88 on both models. Make sense? Okay, well, I hope so. You can always ask in the uh, chat here, though, because we have our crack product specialist from Texas, Tony Escueda. He's available. So if anybody has any questions, ask questions in the chat right next to the thing. There's also um, some uh, guys from InStuff Music, I think, are in there as well. So if you want to buy one right now, hey, they're there to, to sell it to you. So anyway, um, let's talk about YCOS updates. So we have this cool OS strategy with this instrument that the idea is that we listen to what our customers say. And if we can add new sounds to an instrument, we will include them in our free OS updates. So we already have had a few OS updates for the YC and the CP both. They're free updates. Um, right now we're on OS version 1.1. That added two additional electric pianos, one that's a very um, authentic kind of... Um, stock vintage 
tiny piano, and the other one is a tiny piano, but it's totally tweaked out. It has you know n- different preamps, different tines, different things like that. So two different, really great electric pianos that add to the arsenal that's already in there of electric pianos, which I'll play in a moment. Um, so those are the new sounds that are in that instrument. There's also the live CF3, which was requested by a lot of primarily worship musicians that really like our CP300, which is a big um, built-in speakers stage piano, pretty heavy. Um, this is a much lighter instrument, thinner, so it's a little bit easier to move around. And But we didn't have those CP300 sounds that a lot of of musicians really like. It's our f- previous piano, the CF3, um, so it's a different sound. Well, we listened to them. We included that in this new update. Lastly, we also get a lot, had a lot of requests for um, pianos that weren't perfect, you know, that were played in a little bit more, that had a little bit more of a character to them. Um, we have lots of perfect, like the CFX in here is like a perfectly tuned CFX. The C7 is a perfectly tuned C7. What if you want one that's maybe a little bit less in tune, just has a vibe to it? Well, we got requests for that instrument, so we added it with the Nashville C3. Nashville C3 is a six foot one inch soundboard piano that we added to it. I'm going to play all these in a moment. Um, but that is a great piano. I'll talk about it further in a second. But those are the new sounds. Point being that we listen to customers. That's why we have these updates to add new sounds, new features too. They're just some usability features we added to this instrument as well. Um, hey, look, there's a picture of the three instruments. I'm over on this side now because I did, couldn't really fit over there. Over there, it's always different. Well, right up above me, right there, there's the YC61 um, right there. There's the YC73 right there, and there's the YC88. You see that the front panel is identical on them, so just to point out that they are identical internally. So, hey, here's my overhead. I knew that I moved things a little bit. Give me one moment, please, while I fix-ish here. Oh, that's always a drag, isn't it? (laughs) One moment. All because I, uh, let me see something here. Just give me one moment whilst I reset everything. Yeah, I just, you know, one of these things about these live streams is that when you're also the cameraman and the talker and the, um, and the, uh, the player that uh, occasionally we have a little bit of a commercial break once again, in stuff music, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, your place for music. See, I'm doing a little commercial for my for my friends here. Um, let's see, I'll do it like this. I just want to get right in on the screen again. So again, this is the YC88 that we see in front of us. Um, we may have to just deal with this in a moment. So you can really see. There we go. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to go with that. I think we're fine. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, all it takes is just a little, oh, and you're off kilter. Where was I at? Well, let's start here with this uh, live set. That's what this area is right inside here. The live set is basically where you store all of your uh, your your settings on your instrument. You store them so they can be instantly recalled. Um, So what I want to go through first, I'll go through the pianos first, and then I'll go through, I think I'll go through the organs next, and then I'll play some of the electric pianos, and then I will um, play some of the other voices that are in this instrument. So let's start out with pianos. Make sure I have my pedals all lined up. So the first piano I want to play So this is the CFX 9-foot concert grand. This is our top-of-the-line concert grand that we make at Yamaha. I love this instrument so much. The real instrument, it was designed um, 20 years, I think, they took for R&D to develop a new type of uh, of concert grand piano where they took a lot of information from classical pianists, from jazz pianists, but primarily classical pianists, on what they were looking for in, in a perfect piano and try to tr- try to make that. So based on what they said, one of the things that they wanted was a very, very expressive piano, obviously, that has a 
big dynamic range. So when you play soft, you get very, very soft. When you play loud, though, it doesn't necessarily get louder, but it has a strong fundamental, meaning that the, the note you play really pops out on a CFX. So it doesn't, it's not necessarily louder, but it's more present. And the idea of a product like, or of, of a piano like that is that it tends to speak over something like a symphony orchestra. Like if you have a big Rachmaninoff piano concerto with lots of brass, triple fortissimo, the CFX is one of the only instruments in the world that can acoustically project over the instrument or over the orchestra. And not because it's louder, it's because it has that strong fundamental. In the same way that you really hear the oboe, Oboe is not a super loud instrument, but it has a very specific timbre. That's why they tune to the oboe, right? It's because everybody can hear it. It's such a, a distinct sound. Same thing with the, with, the, with the CFX is that it has that ability to do that. Now, I want to show something else here. Right now, I have it set for a normal touch sensitivity. And when I play the CFX, I like to set it to this hard touch sensitivity right here because I like to be able to... When I play super soft, this has such... A nice but when you play louder it just gets it's it's such a seamless play this piano forever it's such a great instrument but I really like that that sensitivity level for and you have some choices here as well but for the CFX I like to be able to get there anyway but see how fast it is to do it it's one button right there to do it it's right on the front you don't have to go into a menu to change how your instrument responds so CFX next to that is a this is the C7. C7 is probably, in fact, I'm certain about this, it is the most recorded piano in the history of music. Um, C7 is a go-to piano for many, many recording studios because it's, it has a similar character to, this, to the CFX, strong fundamental. Um, it records very well. When you have a strong fundamental, it tends to be, it's easier to mix when you don't have all these harmonics going around. Um, so it, it's a great recording piano. This one also has a, a gorgeous, It has a really beautiful sound to it, but the thing I love about the CFX for gospel musicians, man. It really cuts when you dig into it. Great piano, pop, jazz, I mean anything. It's kind of my second piano. A lot of times I'll choose the C7 on a trio gig. When I play solo gig, I kind of like the CFX. But I'll, I'll go between both of them because they're both such excellent pianos. Again, 9-foot Concert Grand CFX. This is a 7-foot 6-inch, so smaller soundboard. doesn't have the big low end like a CFX, but it sure is a great piano. So that's the C7. Next to that is the S700. S700 was a piano that... Um, it's a darker piano. You can immediately hear that it's darker. Um, so it was in the 90s that we made it. We actually put it in the S90ES, and that was a, 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 ver a favorite piano for so many um, uh, you know, studio musicians, stage musicians. Um, and we kind of went away from the S700 for a while, and we got a lot of complaints from exactly those people, professional musicians saying, what happened to the S700? I used that on my S90ES, and now I have a different um, Yamaha product, and it's not in there now. So we brought it back because... Again, we listen to what our customers say, and, uh, and we included it inside. You know, just nice, dark piano. Um, it's also in the Montage and the Modi X as well. We, we really brought that instrument back specifically because it was such a popular piano for so many people. So S700. Now, OS 1.1 added a few more. So this is, this is the live CF3 from the CP300. Again, it's a pretty bright piano, but it has just a different, different quality than something like, here's the CFX again. Here's the live CFX. Now you notice I switched to the live CFX, but it didn't cut off the previous sound. 
Seamless sound switching. One of the cool things about this instrument is that you can move from sound to sound without cutting off the previous sound. So once again, here's the CFX. And here's the live CF3. Different quality, isn't it? You know, different piano. Which one's better? It's whatever you like, you know? It doesn't matter what I like. So live CF3 added in OS version 1.1. The Nashville C3, that's the one I was talking about before. So this was recorded at our Yamaha Entertainment Group Studios in Nashville. Um, so this is a C3. C3 is only a six foot one inch soundboard, um, but this particular one has a, um, a character to it, a quality to it. It's, uh, it's played in, put it that way. And I love this piano for things like... <laughs> stuff like country um also listen to it in the, hopefully you're wearing headphones or you're in a nice uh, stereo environment because we are definitely in stereo i love how it sits in my <laughs> headphones it's such a um organic i guess so and it's great for things like music and stuff like that it really has a nice quality nice character again this was part of what we were listening to our customers saying can you give me some you know just different sounds same thing with this u1 here so this is now i moved on to the u1 u1 is also a character rich piano <laughs> that means it's been played in so this is a 48-inch upright U1, U1 piano, probably, in fact, I'm pretty certain about this one. This is the most popular upright in the world. Go to pretty much any college, and you'll find this one in the practice rooms. Um, it's actually probably the piano that I will be buying relatively soon, I'm thinking. Because I have a small house, perfect for the house, but this really sounds like a U1. Again, it has this nice imaged quality. This is why I always talk to people all the time. When I play gigs, I run in stereo. I have my own personal setup. Um, some people use in-ear monitors, which is great. You're still getting stereo there as well. But boy, when you're playing a small gig, um, I have two DXR10s that I use for my, my little uh, gigging thing, but I always run with two because stereo is so important. You get the best sound when you run in stereo as opposed to just one speaker. So there's the U1. Finally, there's just a couple more pianos. There's a few of these that are already layered pianos. This is piano and strings. One sound with a layer in it. Again, seamless sound switching. I went to another sound. And this is CFX is the main piano here. So it's piano and synth. Now, you can also layer pianos by just going like this. <laughs> so I put a second piano in the layer, and I'll talk about this in a second. But if I want to use that, that additional key section for maybe an electric piano, I might want to use the layered piano that's already in there. But the benefit of using it in a key section is that if I want to have a little bit more gain or less gain, or a little brighter tone, you have a little bit more control over that pad sound. So just turning on a section that fast. So those are the basically the pianos in the instrument. Let's move on to the organs now. Um, so there are three different types of VCM virtual circuitry modeled organs in this instrument. Um, VCM is, a, is actually a technology that we developed. Um, it's been out for a while, but it's been traditionally used for effects. So things like vintage stomp box style effects or compressors, things like that. VCM can also be used as a tone generation technology, and that's what they used to build these VCM organs. The thing that's cool about virtual circuitry modeling that's a little different than other types of modelings is that it takes the schematics of the original instruments, like a phaser box or 
a vintage draw bar organ, and it models them based on the components. So it really builds individual components into the model, um, which is which is a pretty uh, pretty unique type of modeling technology. Really good at what it does. Um, so we use VCM for these three organs in here, and we also use VCM for some of the effects as well. But let's talk about the three H1, H2, H3. H1 is sort of like. So um, H1 is the perfect organ, let's say, the one that's in the studio that is constantly maintained, really nice, great organ. Right now I have it set for a uh, split, lower, um, upper, here's my upper, upper manual, lower manual down here. You'll notice in the, in the lower manual, I just switched to it, I have it set two octaves up, so I don't have to, you know, if it was down here, it wouldn't be good for a comp. So you can set independent octaves per uh, manual, which is very nice. So this is if I have a bass player, I'd probably play this. I could also set it if I'm kicking bass as well, you know, by setting up, you know, very quickly. You can just do it like this. This would be closer to a kicking a bass. There you go. Right? So um, super easy to do that. See how fast it is with these draw bars, just like that. Check out how cool this is, by the way. So you have seven different colors that you can you can switch to. See where it says draw bar color. Let's change my lower manual. I'm on the lower manual right now. It's red, um, but I could make it white. I can make it red. I can make it yellow. I can make it green. I can make it cyan, cyan, and blue. I think I use blue for my top a lot of times, but I think in this case, what I use blue and red. But you can change the draw bar settings. Another thing that's slick about this. Do you see how? It shows me what my settings are, and this is your classic sort of uh, jazz three down, and I have the ninth draw bar, but I have percussion on right here. We'll talk about that in a second. But check out if I want to move this draw bar. If I just touch it, I have it set to, um, to jump directly to what the settings are here when I just touch one of these guys a little bit. Um, I, I also can set it to catch where um, – I'd have to go up and pass where it's at to catch it, to bring it back. But I like it in jump right now. But you'll notice that um, you know they are active as soon as you move them. So it's a, it's a really nice draw bar design. I've seen a lot of these. The other thing I like about it is that even if, like in this one right here, you see how – well, I just moved it there. Let me bring it back to here. Um, what's the best way to do this? There we go. Okay, so – I won't touch this one, but they're translucent strip in here, so you can see through them on that um, draw bar right here. So you can still see where you're at with these segments here with the LED, but they're still physical draw bars. It's a really cool, well thought through design that looks cool too. So um, anyway, I'm going to go through. Here's the rotary speaker right here. Now I have two different types of rotary speakers. I have rotary A and rotary B. Rotary A is like your traditional rotary speaker. Rotary B is a rotary speaker with a transistor preamp, so it has a little bit more drive. Great for rock organs, for example. Uh, I'll go through that in a second. But notice that you have the control over the over it over here, right? So this is where you'd want it. You want it kind of close to where you're at. Or, in my case, what I did is I went and I have an FC5 down here, which is a foot switch, and you can see me right now changing it by just stomping on the foot switch fast, slow. So you can set it up so you don't have to go up there and grab it when you need to change the speed. Super nice. Again, you know, for a stage piano, you really want that. Um, moving right along, you'll notice that you have uh, a preamp drive right here. I like that preamp drive so much. <laughs> There's it. There's what's it down. In fact, let me just reset my live set here. So that's with no preamp drive. Here's a lot of preamp drive. Which one do you like better? I personally like preamp drive. I just love the <clears throat> the grittiness of it. Just love that sound. Um. So yeah, preamp drive right here. Two different types of vibrato and chorus. Right now, here's a. I'll turn on the chorus. Second chorus. A lot of people like the second chorus. And then, right here, as I move it down here, you have vibrato. 
Now, let's say I want to go back. By the way, I will show this again. I showed this on another previous thing. But um, if I want to go the other direction, right now it's toggling through chorus one, chorus two, chorus three, vibrato one, vibrato two, vibrato three. What if I want to go back to vibrato two quickly? Hold exit, it goes back the other direction. See? There's a lot of cool little exit uh, things that you can do, and I'll show them along the way here, that are shortcuts. It's in the manual. There's a list of them. There's probably, I think, 20 of them or so um, that are really nice to know. And that's one of them right there. If I just want to go back to, um, you know, let's say I'm in chorus one, chorus two and one, I want to check between which one do I like better, chorus two or one. Here's chorus two. And I'll go back to chorus one. And I'll go to chorus two. And I'll go back to chorus one. See? Kind of cool. So that is, for organ enthusiasts, that's correct. There are three types of vibrato, three types of chorus in the traditional drawbar organ. You dig what I'm saying? Um, Percussion, second and third percussion, slow and fast, normal, soft, on and off. Um, you can, when you turn on percussion or turn off percussion, you can hear that ninth draw bar in there, the whistler, as they say. But when I turn it on, it defeats. Now, I have the option in this, uh, in the editing, to have both the ninth draw bar and the percussion at the same time. But in the traditional type of draw bar organ, the ninth draw bar is using. Um, the percussion, the same uh, mechanism for the percussion. So it goes off. This is how it would be if you were playing the more traditional version. So that's it. Um, that's H1 organ. Let me move to an H2 organ. I call this one H2 smoked. It has my smiley face uh, type of draw bar setting. In and you notice in the screen, it also doubles. It shows you what the draw bar setting is. If I turn on the the lower manual as well, um, or switch to lower manual, show it there. If I go lower manual, it shows it in the screen, split like this. It's pretty slick. Um, so it, it you have this redundancy um, in the screen and in the draw bars here. So the H2 organ is more of a played-in organ. It has a little bit just different different quality, different character. Here, let me just switch to an H1 organ with the same setting. H1, here's H2. Not a huge bit of difference, but if you pull things down, take off the real slight difference, I must say. It really happens though if I go into the organ and I go to the organ settings. Now this is this is some of the some of the menu diving. I wouldn't really do all this on stage. I wouldn't need to though because I've already kind of set my organ up. But so this right now is is um, is the H2 organ. Now I'm just going to bring down just a three. So I increased tons of leakage now. Sounds like I need to get it serviced at 127. Now listen to the difference between an H1 leak at 127. This is a well-maintained organ, right? Go to H2. It, it, it definitely has more funk in it. But just real quickly to show you how to get into some of these things that you can change. Um, key click, percussion link to one foot. That's that one where I can use both the organ percussion and that ninth draw bar. Expression type. This is pretty cool. For organists, they get this. Um, this is how the traditional draw bar organ works. If I bring my expression all the way down, you still hear it. You still hear the sound, right? Now I can set this so it takes it all the way, so it's gone now, right? So that's more like your synthesizer type or whatever type of volume control with the expression. But if you're playing more like the authentic draw bar organ, it doesn't entirely take it out. Plus, it increases the drive as you increase the expression. So you get the So if you want to do those wow, the screeches and stuff that you do with the draw bar organ, whatever the rah, the splats. Um you want the drive to kick in as well. That's that's cool. So just a side note there. By the way, you also have rotary speaker control over here. Level Background noise, I want to show this in a second. Stereo or mono. Speed and acceleration of both the horn. Acceleration, horn rotor, deceleration, horn rotor. You can really edit this quite a lot. 
the level of the horn and the rotor is a really big um, thing that I show people all the time. Now notice in this one, I call this one, once again, let me go back to my original sound here. Right? H2 smoked. Why did I call it smoked? Because I pulled a lot of the, the high end out of it. And I did it by editing the rotary speaker in here. So if you go to rotary speaker, sorry, rotary speaker right here, and you go to um, level, you'll notice that my horn level is at 56. That's the high frequency. So I pulled, now I could turn that up. You hear the higher frequency coming back. But it's too much for what I was going for here. I was going for much more of a smoked sound, like a lower frequency, a little low fineness. But my rotor is up 115. That's where the low frequency is. So you have control to really form this organ sound from what you get in the box. You have you, you can really do a lot to the sound. Last thing I want to show you is this cool thing in here. Part of the VCM uh, modeling of the rotary speaker is background noise. And I just turned it way up. So if you hear that breathing in some of my sounds, it's because the rotary speaker's out there. Check it out. Speed it up. Slow it down. I love, I love doing it from fast and then stopping it. There it is right there. I'll speed it up again. So I, I like a little bit of it in there. You know, I had it what set at 70 and it sh see it shows you the um it shows you the the settings that you've saved at the live set level, which is nice. So, and when it gets to the 70, see how it <laughs> little things about that I love how this, you know, oh, okay, we're we're matched now. It goes to not the you know whatever you would call that, the white around the number loss of word. Anyway. So, Moving right along before I run out of time. This is H3. H3 uses, um, this is more like kind of a prog rock sort of organ. It's a customized organ that has a very distinct uh, percussion sound, especially. And I'm using this, um, let me bring in some. Let's do a nice Almond Brothers type. Much more drive in that rotary B um, with the transistor preamp. Turn it up. Tone control. I like my low tone, but I can make it like. If I want to cut right through that mix, that rotary speaker will do it. I also have a lot of a lot of background noise in that one. Um, so those are your H model organs. Very quickly, I want to play through. So now this is the FM organ. F1 is a um, is a pure sine wave organ. It has this great quality. I love it for things like gospel. It still has a... <laughs> FM. Lots of my gospel friends really love that organ, and they actually choose it over some of the H1 just because it has a it has this nice enveloping quality. It also doesn't have what's called fold back, so the low end is all is very even all the way through. Look up fold back if you wonder what that is, because I'm gonna run out of time if I keep talking. F2 organ. So there's two um, combo organs. F2 is a uh, is like the British transistor combo organ. So. <laughs> So it, that has more of a kind of a of a square wave, pulse wave sound, as opposed to the Italian version, much brighter, much more of a. Pretty cool, huh? So you got your combo organs covered with this instrument. Now, before I move on, I'm just going to very quickly play through some of the electric pianos. So this is the RD, so I'll play through basically all of them real quick here. 
This would be the 78RD is our most modern sounding one. Um, it's a great. And you have the effects right here if I want to add a add a phaser to it. 32 effects per key section, which is pretty sweet. And let's say I, right now I have the compressor going into the phaser. Remember I have my little shift things. Let's say I want to switch that around. I want the phaser to go through the compressor. Just do that, see what it did? It switched the position. Because the signal flow goes this way, effect one, effect two, and then to the output. Plus you have an additional effect right here if I wanted to route an additional you know, ring modulator. <laughs> Using that, the utility effect is what I call it. I kind of route that wherever I want it. And you see how fast it is to switch it on and off if I want to go, if I want to play in here. And then I just want to go to outer space at the end of a tune. I have that effect right there just in case I need to grab that effect. So cool. You know, I got to say, I love this instrument. Even, even I have so much, so much um, experience with it, and I still just fall in love with it all over again. It's, it's just that kind of stuff I love. So that's the RD-78. Um, now I'm going to do the double switch. So I switched to the B section and turned off the A section. <laughs> So 75 RD funky, funky. It has a really low. Check out the difference between the two here. Without the phaser on. And then here's the brighter, meatier kind of 75, a little bit more reverb on that one too. Um, different effects though. See how there's different effects on each one of these, which is pretty slick. So, so that's 78, 75. Um, in this one, we'll start with 73RD is sort of like your basic vintage first version of the time piano sound, more vintage felt instead of neoprene for the hammers. This one's definitely a felt one. This is probably my main go-to one is that one, but right next to it... Sixty-seven RD Dark is one that we added with the first OS update. Remember, we're on the second one. The first one. This one's a backline one. That's one of a vintage, vintage, vintage. Everything's the the uh, the original components. So it has a very vintage sound to it. So that's in here as well. Now I'll play some of the two that were added in OS version one point one, the current OS. First one is this gorgeous. This is, a, again, very uh, authentic felt hammer, first, second version of the time piano from the 60s, 70s kind of area, early, early 70s. Um, the thing I like about this one is that they added this one because it has this great, this nice bell-like quality, and I try not to play things that uh, I didn't write, but I can kind of... You know, That's if I were leaving, right? You know what sign I was playing. But um, that bell-like quality is that's perfect for a, for a tune like that. Right next to it, the seventy-four RD stage. So this is the other direction. This is a completely tweaked out. It's got a lot of bark in the low end. But this is a, a different preamp, different tines. The entire instrument um, is just completely customized. So two new. Time pianos added in this OS. I want to play definitely. So WR, that's the reed style pianos. There's three of them in here. Got to turn on it with a little bit of tremble. different types. I'll just go through them real quick because you can switch them right here. Bright. And then wide is sort of the best of the best. Kind of. A little, little bright, a little dark. I believe that's the sound designer's personal vintage re piano that we sampled for this. So, WRs. Um, last thing I definitely want to show you 
are just some of the really just different sounds in this instrument. I mean, you can do so much. Here's like the pad of crom. I made this. Now I add an organ to it. <laughs> See that? There's a there's a reverse or a, yes, a um, reverse reverb in there. So it comes back, but it's also being ran through a flanger on my organ as well. So now I've switched to another sound without cutting out the previous sound. If I wanted to show you. That's not a song. So OB brass, two different brass sections that I have in here running through chorus and uh, R2, R2 is hall reverb. And uh, B section has chorus, same thing. So I just kind of doubled up, but there are two different brass sounds that I have in here as well. How about uh, just an FM pad? Or French horn section. First, we'll do it with just horn one. But you add that second horn here. to this. Steel string guitar and a, and a lead, kind of a, a, a sine wave style. Now I add an organ to it. Rotary speaker. Again, just there's so many sounds in this instrument. Uh, just underscoring the versatility of the YC series. That's what this is really about. It's just awesome. I'm running out of time. So before I go away, let me see what I can do here. Um, I think I'll just go to my, uh, my, uh, my, my presenter here. Hey. So if you have any questions whatsoever, if you ask them, hopefully if you asked any, they were answered because I can't really see the feed as we're going here. But definitely go to in stuff. You'll have all your questions answered there. That, you know... I love in stuff too because I go into that store and there's a keyboard department in there that's so slick. It's just wonderful. I love their keyboard department. The store is awesome. Pittsburgh is such a great city. I love going there. Um, you guys are so lucky to live where you live, I'll tell you, um, and have a music store of that, of that caliber right there. So, again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please stop by your in stuff music store and uh, they have the YC there. I think they have it in stock. I think all models are in stock. Um, so definitely go there and check it out. Once again, this is Blake from Yamaha. I totally appreciate you watching this live stream today. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful rest of spring going into summer. I got my, my, uh, I swear this smells so good. I've been smelling this this whole time. Mm, wow. So have a great one. I'll see you around at another cool clinic at Instant Music.